This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater. And I suppose I ought to stick around if these are the movies that are waiting outside. Better Nate Than Ever is a new adventure comedy musical that doesn't have much adventure, has even fewer songs, and isn't all that funny. Directed by Tim Federal, it follows Nate, a 13-year-old theater kid who dreams of a leading role in a stage musical at his school. His friend Libby clues him in on something much more prestigious, open auditions for an upcoming Broadway show. Sneaking out and taking a bus, the two head for New York where they find it's not as easy to break into show business as they might have thought. Even so, with the reluctant help of his aunt Heidi, Nate only gets closer and closer to making his dreams come true. If that sounds pretty uninteresting and a bit bland, you aren't too far off. The story is overall very safe, with few risks taken and little deviation from the kinds of formulas you'd find in a movie like this. It's your run-of-the-mill, by-the-numbers, save-the-cat kind of structure, almost to the point that any potential shifts in direction are course-corrected through contrivances and coincidences. Maybe the right character is in the right place at the right time, or another character decides to do something that keeps the story moving forwards, etc. It's also weirdly reliant on plot points, in that a scene might begin on a specific plot point, continue into something like a buffer or a filler that just kills time, then end on another plot point and move on to the next scene and plot point. Despite the free time that scenes give themselves, there isn't much put towards character development, with almost everybody lacking a significant personal arc and otherwise being generally one note. Nate himself also has some weak writing to his name, designed to be somewhat energetic and impulsive, but only ends up being more annoying in the final cut. It doesn't help that he's not really challenged at all until the ending scenes, uh, tying back to the story contrivances and the film's other writing problems. Most of all, it's snappy but unnatural dialogue, as if the characters knew how to respond to someone before anything was actually said. The movie also has a roundabout way of bringing up LGBT issues, which I don't want to get into because I'm no authority at all, but it does reflect something in other Disney movies I've seen which do a poor job of actually incorporating them. Did I mention that this is a Disney movie? Anyways, on a final note, the musical aspect of this film is, again, pretty much non-existent, with only two original songs within the story, and one that plays over the credits. Only one of these is an actual traditional song and dance scene. That's pretty much it. The worst part about it is that the movie does make an effort to show Nate's imagination as having a theatrical, artificial flair about it, but it's an idea limited to the first act, as if they wanted to include it from the start, but couldn't figure out how to incorporate it or they ran out of money and decided to scrap it midway through. The production values of Better Nate Than Ever seem pretty low budget overall. Everything seems shot on location for the sake of cutting costs, and even then it could also just be some elaborate set pieces, knowing how much effort they put into CGI nowadays. There's a scene set in Times Square that may as well have been a green screen type deal with how centralized the action is, as if there was a small radius around the characters where people could be, and the rest was cleared out. Anyways, cinematography doesn't help make any of this look better, keeping the film's visuals looking pretty flat and practical, 
and making sure things are just in the frame. Even in fantasy sequences, the movie doesn't try all too much to make anything look expressive, though it does at least manage to bring out the creative spirit of musical theater. If anything, the editing is where the filmmakers did try something, though that something ends up being the same smash cut joke several times over. It only shows up about five or seven times by the end of the movie. In any case, the general idea at hand seems to be less of a focus upon Nate and his love of theater and his own dreams and desires to become a star, and more upon the greater pseudo-adventure through New York, as if they expected the premise alone to carry the weight. The end result is a movie that seems to want to pander to theater kids but I don't think would appeal to them at all by the end, save for any projection and wish fulfillment, which I feel like would be better achieved by watching an actual musical and imagining yourself on stage instead. I know I would. I mean, I wouldn't. I wasn't a theater kid. I mean, I was, but better Nate than ever. Tim Federal, 2022. Uh, one and a half stars. I don't really recommend seeing it. Again, you're better off with an actual musical than this. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you have something to add, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. I'll give this movie some props for not being a love letter to New York unlike most movies. Then again, you'd think that it would at least try glamorizing Broadway itself, right? I don't think we even see much of it here.